Welcome back to Spank Ranch Garage. Tonight we got this little Ryobi generator. It's one of those inverter ones. Very small, lightweight, quiet unit. It's got some problems though. The pull starter was broken off and it's been uh, kind of ghetto rigged. We'll show you that, but that's okay. Seems like a pretty nice little unit. It says it's got Bluetooth and crap. Um, this is taken off and this is part of the pull start handle. The pull start broke and they had to fix it on the job site. So they, they pulled the wire up through or the cord up through the side of the pull starter because they couldn't get it back through the hole. And it's starting to tear into the plastic there. So we got to fix that properly. So these generators being that they're so small and compact and quiet is really nice. But to actually get in to do any real engine work, it's quite a pain in the butt. So you pretty much got to split this whole clamshell, I think. I haven't taken it apart yet, but we'll see. So you got a bunch of Allen bolts all the way around. These are three millimeters. Got two up top, two down below. You've got one on each side here. Then if you take the fuel cap off, and flip this rubber plate up. You've got two more up here as well. And then this front plate will come off. 15 amp at 120 volts, probably close to 2,000 watts. And they serve their purpose. They're not the most powerful generators, but for how light and compact and quiet they are, uh, from like a weekend camp perspective, you really can't beat these. You can run a grinder, a small air compressor, charge things. Whatever. Wheels are just 10 millimeters. And they will climb off. All right, so on the side with the uh, on off switch, you got a T20 buried in here. You need a six inch extension to get to it. One up front. And then two more T20s up here, but they made the surrounding hole too small to fit a socket. So you got to use a screwdriver. So you get them out. Now you need a T15 for the handle. It's already kind of pissing me off that you need like 12 different tools to disassemble this thing. Uh, it's probably because it is not made to be disassembled by the consumer. So from the back of this thing, we are back to three millimeters on this grate here. Great. Okay, two pieces. There's your muffler and then this is your air intake to your actual AC generator. Yes, it's an AC generator. Just turn it back into DC and then make AC out of it. That's how these work. Okay, so now we're getting more gappage. On the front, obviously, these would be a Torx and not a hex as the rest of the unit was. It's two T20s at the bottom here. And then we'll start pulling T20s on the display here. Okay, that starts to come out. That's fine and dandy. So now we've got some case spreadage up front here, which is excellent. On the side here, a couple more three millimeters. Single three millimeter on the back here. Awesome. Repeat the process on the other side. So you see we've got one three millimeter Allen back here. And then you should have two in the middle. After removing those, you're gonna wanna take this mechanism and push it inwards, get it off of that side panel so you don't have to disconnect everything is a T20. Let's go ahead and remove that. Now you can change your tool for the 15th time 
and grab a T15. And that should let us pull this whole side free, hopefully. Okay, see how that's kind of floating now? All right, a little bit of screws flying everywhere, okay. All right, if you do that carefully, that will be what you're left with. Now you got this whole pile of crap laying here. You wanna unplug the sending unit from the fuel tank. So this is what tells the little computer in this how much gas is left. The fuel line is kind of long enough to just let it hang over here on the side. And I've also got the kill switch here, which is your black and orange wire. Go ahead and unplug that just so that's not stressed right now. Kind of get everything out of the way. And we are getting closer to the pull starter. Thing guys, if you're working out here, be wearing safety glasses, all right? Because you don't want crap flying in your eyes, especially when you're taking apart engines and stuff. So your first pull start bolt is right here. Your second one's here. Your third one, unfortunately, is way down here. And there's a huge capacitor coming off the back of this control box here. You can't get a ratchet in on it. I'm gonna start with the four T15s that hold this surrounding steel bracket on. Okay, see that? So that will be, that will probably get us what we need. Perfect. So we're just gonna pull that aside. No need to remove everything else. I think that's gonna get me just the clearance I need. There it is. All that work just to get to the pull starter. If you made it that far, grab yourself a beer. I cut this knot off. Then we'll give her a little heat. All right, so now we got a sealed end there. It's all melted together and nice. So we can pop the handle off. Feed this thing back through where it belongs. And let's get it through the hole. Like that, all right? But now it's still too long, right? We don't have any spring tension. So if you guys don't know this, you will now. Grab a pick, pull it up through like this, right? And align this slot here. This slot's here for a reason. Basically, you're gonna walk this around like this to add winding to the spring. So I'm gonna go around once. Let's see how it feels. Does it retract all the way? Yeah, that would. And it actually has good spring tension. So I'm only gonna go one wrap. You wanna go the minimum you can to get it to fully retract. And that feels good. Remember that the generator came with this side panel and it's got a hole for the pull start. So obviously you wouldn't wanna to have to reach into the engine housing pull this so we'll take this knot back out we're gonna put the rope through this auxiliary panel and then go from there so it actually ends up coming through like that gonna make it more annoying to put back together and then you even got this little trim piece here to make you feel warm and fuzzy so with the pull start back in right if you had to do anything else to this unit you'd have to take it basically to this point so if you're gonna replace the brain you're pretty well there your display you know, can actually come out of this front plate. If you had to replace a receptacle, you're kind of going to be doing the same thing. Um, back here, you've got your exhaust. Nothing really to go wrong there. You've got your actual little AC generator. Look how small they are now. Crazy. Um, you know, pretty much anything you'd have to service, even probably to do a plug. I don't know if you could do a spark plug through the uh, side port there, but now's the time to do it. If you had to clean the carburetor, check the air filter yada 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 it's real easy when you got all this apart there is a fuel filter here serviceable item uh otherwise these things are pretty maintenance free you know change the oil click keep the air filter clean put a fuel filter in it maybe a plug every thousand hours and she's ready to rip so assembling this is going to be the exact same process in reverse let's get to it reminder putting this back together this ground wire here it comes up to the engine block, splits off, goes forward to the display. That needs to come down and be grounded down here on the computer bracket, right? Do not miss this one. Another thing I want to show you while I'm in here is you see this vented area under the control panel here. Well, this is sealed to this box here, which is then sealed to this heat sink on this computer here so and i'm calling this computer you call it inverter solid state drive whatever the hell you want to call it doesn't matter but either way that needs to be cooled i can look in here and see that this is packed with mud 
because the generator, you know, has been used outside like most of them are. So now is a great time to do a little, you know, little cooling thing, clean out while you're in here. Keep this thing breathing. That's what's going to keep these alive. Another while I'm in here, pulled the axle out the side of this housing. You can see fairly bent fairly bent. Let's straighten that out. Really cheesy axle for what they want you to do with it, especially if you're loading it in and out of a pickup truck. You're going to smack it on the ground and bend this axle. There's no way around it. Reassembly. We'll start from this left side. Drop the base in. Now we got to pull through this plate here that holds our push or pull starter. All right, get that hanging in the right spot. And now, don't forget about this wire here, right? The orange and black is your kill switch. Go ahead and grab your fuel tank, get it pushed up on top, and then we want to pull this fuel control or engine control, whatever, up to where it needs to be. So I'm plugging in the fuel tank sending unit there. So the only tricky part about getting this back in is you want to fold the front in first because you'll see this tab right here. This needs to get under this intake duct here. So you kind of bring this thing forward in first, get that tab tucked. And it all drops in nice. And then take this rubber thing and you kind of spin it around, tuck your fuel tank situation in up here. That'll hold the fuel tank for you for now. And then you'll see where this fuel switch was supposed to go. You'll have to do some dilly dally and to get this twisted up back into place. But once it's in there, run your three screws in and then you put your knob back on. Once again, three millimeters on this. Now it's square, it'll go on a couple ways, but you know that it goes this way, right? You, you put it on, you test it, you're trying to line up to these graphics here of off, run, restart, whatever. So cold start, run, stop. Everything lines up, woo-hoo, full start. Feels awesome, super factory, right with that, so good. Yeah, a little bit on the floor. That's what's up. So hopefully you don't spill any on the floor, but with the way the design is, you're, you're, uh, you're looking towards that. The further you tilt it, the more oil you get out of it. And then where do you draw the line? Do you turn the whole thing upside down? I don't know. Yes, don't be alarmed if you get hardly any oil out of these. I might have a quarter of a quart here, but it was full. So maybe that's all these little motors hold. I don't know. That was easy. It's because we're going to be wheeling this girl. Just put fresh oil in it. So the one thing to remember, do not thread the dipstick in when you're checking the oil on these. And then, oh, there you are, okay? You're full, you're clean, everybody's happy. See how she sounds? Choke it. These things are so dang quiet. So we're idling, 10 hours remaining at that load. I don't have any load on it. Turn the idle off, so now we're running full load, or full RPM at least. You get six hours, and it's probably got three quarters of a gallon in the tank. It's just crazy how efficient these are. Turn that back off, she drops right down. We'll throw a couple load tests on it and see what happens. All right, so we got a bucket vacuum, shop back type deal here. And I got a Makita four and a half inch grinder here. Usually pulls like seven to ten amps. Let's put her under some load. All right, so with the bucket shop back running and the angle grinder, bogging the angle grinder into a piece of steel till I almost stall it. I was able to pull almost max amperage out of this little unit. 
But I think this thing's only rated at 2,000 watts or whatever. Fabrique in China. So this is a Chinese unit. Not surprised to see it, though working on it, it, it feels like decent quality. Now, uh, 1,800 watts continuous with 2,300 surge. What is interesting is the 3150 to 5050 RPM on this. Um, I'm surprised. I, I don't know if they're going to say idle is 3150 RPMs. If it is, it doesn't sound like it. I'd be curious to tack this thing and see what it actually idles at. But either way, it gets the job done here. Um, you know, I'll charge your phone 2.1 amps, kind of a joke there. But 15 amps at 120 volts, you can get some things done with that. So all in all, not a bad unit. Anyway, that wraps it up for this one. If you guys have any questions on these inverter-based generators from Ryobi or maybe even any other company, post them in the comments. And I'll tell you what I think about it. Thanks for watching Spank Ranch Garage.